the next presenter will be Peter Bulldog. Thank you very much. much. And thank you, John Paolo, for filling my spot. I had technical problems, but I hope they are gone now. Uh, can you see my screen? I'm trying to share my screen. Top share. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm sharing. Good. So, so I would like to start a very formal sorry again problem with my vision. Sorry, we are seeing your screen, but not your presentation. Okay. You see my scene without my presentation, okay? That's unfortunate. Yeah, I will try again. Okay. This is an embarrassing. This is very embarrassing. Okay. So I will be. You can see your presentation now. You can see my presentation. Oh, okay. Just at the moment when I became. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. Good. Thank you very much. So this will be a shorter presentation, less technical. Uh, this is about the fourth space in the. Uh, fourth revolution, uh, what is the fourth space? Uh, Work-life balance through integration of all our areas, uh, which is life, private, business, social, and that's the movement against uh, work-life separation, rather for integration. Uh, the, po the point is interesting because it started before the pandemics and it had very little to do with online life. Uh, this starts for, with Arno Morrison just a year or less than a year before the pandemics. Uh, however, uh, now we are talking about digital communications and great informality uh, that have brought the workplace uh, into the home, while the office environment has been increasingly remingled and reintegrated along the lines of uh, cafe. So this is a lifestyle. Not everybody may like it. Yeah, I grew up in the home where both of my parents were completely integrating work and life. So for me, just adding and also in, in entertainment. Uh, so this is good but we have specific chances because we uh, live in the, the times where we, we could, could have learned something from COVID, such as using the zoom sorry that i was not an example of very professional use of this so the uh, continuity between the informal places of work and networking uh, moves to the four space as a uh, also voice for the oppressed, but being African-American minority or historically victim of colonialism, where you have specific spaces. Now let's go to something uh, very much closer to our time and probably to our interest. Daniel Hardegger from Switzerland uh, came out with the uh, paper on merging of spaces. It is no longer available online, but it was really the beginning of the fourth space, understood as I like it. It focuses on digital inform, inv innovation communities. Uh, that's a, an ambitious statement. We want to focus on the question of how digital innovation communicates. Communities must be structured and organized on a social and technological level to fulfill the functions of digital fourth space which takes place in the areas of science, economy, politics, and society. This statement is golden, actually a little bit more brave than later work by Hardegger, uh, because it integrates us in the digital space. 
which is consistent with uh, industry 4.0 or the fourth uh, you know revolution as Schwab uh, is writing about. And so what we need is to see where AI stands, stands in this space. Once we have digital space, we can talk about integrating or not uh, autonomous or semi-autonomous AI, and that's the link to DICA. What can we do? We can have three options. The option from what uh, Schaub calls the third industrial revolution, uh, starting in the 1940s or 50s, and this is based on GoFi mostly uh, computing. It's the, it stopped at the towards the beginning of the 21st century. Now we have the fourth space, and people are still apprehensive. Integration of uh, AI uh, with the society is viewed as controversial. Uh, reliability is mixed, and sometimes uh, we have major, major snafus by sort of autonomous AI uh, doing things that, you know, many not very smart people would avoid. So this is our time. That's why philosophically, uh, or talking about ethics, the uh, first uh, part, the uh, 3.0 was connected with Asimov's ethics, which treated AI or robots as tools, and they were not much more than tools, so that was appropriate. Uh, today, we have people emphasizing uh, our, our ability to control AI and to treat them as junior partners. Uh, however, I hope we can go Further, and we are on the verge not of industry 4.5.0 or something like that, but going beyond the fourth space that was uh, the focus on the panel I was uh, lucky to guide in related to the similar topic. Uh, but the point is that we need to see the whole digital revolution the way Luciano Floridi does so. Namely, we need to see it in the context of a digital revolution or Turing revolution. Uh, as you can see from the slide, uh, if Floridis, uh, Floridis focuses mostly historiosophical, so there would be different positioning of human beings uh, by Copernicus. Uh, we are not the astronomical center of the universe by Darwin. We are not so unique from animals, from other animals. By Freud, we don't really necessarily uh, control all our motivations and we are not very logical most of the time. And Libet and Velmans follow up in the right direction from that. And Turing shows us that we are not necessarily the only smart entities and uh, soon we might become not the smartest entities, okay? So, uh, uh, Luciano's, uh, the, fourth, the fourth revolution is very important and we should stay within it. So again, we should see those that is called third industrial revolution, fourth industrial revolution, and what I, what I call going beyond the fourth industrial re revolution that many Baika researchers refer to in many years, including Steve Taller yesterday, including Ben Gertzel at his Congress, you know, last month, uh, including many, many presentations even today. We need to understand that in that context, we are going to be able to bring uh, AI to the fourth space be it online, uh, be it in some other domains. This is also a nice twist because there was a tendency of bringing uh, mostly robots to the human world within the presence online. We can talk of much easier integration of AIs 
Dabus has got a patent in Republic of South Africa, and you know, Sofia uh, has got citizenship of Saudi Arabia, uh, both on African continent. So that might show many things, might show that the rest of the world is not particularly ready for that, might show, however, that those under attended to areas on, of the world are, might become leaders in many technological areas. Again, this is the talk of mostly social limitations of autonomous robots, which were completely justifiable during Asimov, during Economy 3.0, are still justified in 4.0, but in something called 4.5, I call it that way. There are probably two other researchers that use this term in slightly similar sense. Uh, this would be the time when things start going better. And we see this even at this Congress that we have many more people who see AI developing in the very ambitious way, uh, which was not even visible, you know, some 10 years ago when Baika was starting, that was an exception. Ben Gertzel with his uh, Baika talk on MIT was fighting in that direction, a few other people, but that was the minority view, I believe, I remember. Uh, so this is uh, our chance of actually moving to the third phase also of the Turing revolution, as Solidity would say. And so I follow Ben Geltzel, Stephen Thaler, Troy Kelly, who was my boss during the research I've done, you know, a few years ago, not connected with David, as far as I understand, who claim or imply in their own uh, different ways the digital revolution is going to lead us very far. So actually, this is the apex, the main part of that movement which is just coming. Now, how is it connected with uh, artificial general intelligence becoming superhuman? Many people believe, and I think they are right, that this is still a long stage, but the stage that is coming now when AI becomes smooth, doesn't require that much supervision because it becomes much more reliable than human partners and becomes non-replaceable. You know, when you have hypersonic anything that you would shoot down, want to shoot down, humans won't do because any, you know, reasonable human decision takes two seconds. You don't get two seconds or one second in that kind of situation. I'm not just talking about warfare. I'm talking about very well-known, you know, investment uh, bots and other things. So this was the more big picture perspective, kind of add up to what I was trying to say yesterday with my guests, especially uh, Steve Tyler. Thank you very much. I think my time, time is over now. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you. Do you have any questions? So hi, Peter. <clears throat> what about the virtual worlds like that are visual in terms of like metaverse or M NVIDIA's Omniverse? So would the fourth, I guess, space be that kind of virtual space and these AI, you know, big kind of robots, there will be virtual embodied characters as to what you envision? Uh, yes and no. I was one of the early enthusiasts on Second Life mm -hmm. and one of my best friends, you know, from Jagiellonia University is still advocating for SL in the, its new versions and having PhD dissertations in SL. Mm -hmm. This is one of those environments, but because of the major uh, business interests, we never know which game is going to be the main game in town. Uh. I don't want to overemphasize those Number one, because of the fact that Second Life, you know, which you looked like the next best thing, uh, now is a minor player. Mm. Uh, so I'm not sure whether Metaverse 
uh, would be bigger and I actually think it might, but the point is for presentations like this, not to limit uh, what we are talking about only to the situations like metaverse, because this is about banking. I'm now working on a project at the Warsaw School of Economics with some colleagues and, uh, you know, the Council of Polish Banks about virtual reality or, or in terms of banking. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is not just one platform. I think this is the global movement and it is very dynamic. Uh, I think any overstability would be would be a mark of our present mentality where we still want to control uh, the approach. The ethicist who is closer to this autonomous uh, approach to and respect for AI is uh, Jim uh, Moore, uh, who was writing to this effect even in the last very last moments of the last century. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for this question. I, I, Peter, I just wanted to say re really nice presentation, and um, I, 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 I think it's it's an excellent idea of work. Um, I remember like 25 years ago or so, like I remember I read this book, it was uh, Ray Kurzweil, The Singularity is Near, and I don't know how much new was in there. I knew about chips getting faster and for relays, but I think the fact that he, he just put the concepts together, you know, very motivating, and I think the same thing with um, fourth 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 economy, fourth space, something to think about because these things do have effects on our lives. Um, here, here in Ontario where I live, um, right now there's like emphasis to put more, a little bit more AI into medical systems, the record systems and the doctors like working offline. And you know what, this year there's a 40% um, um, or did you, oh, there's a 40% burnout rate in doctors. They did a study, you know, so people, I think people need to think about this, what we're doing, like in terms of, you know, the economy getting more automized and where we work. And um, before when, you know, people were working in medicine, for example, in offices, and maybe you didn't have as much automation with EMRs, much lower burnout rates. So it's, um, I, I don't really have any questions. I think it's, it's, it's like when I read Singularity, I said, Hey, these are really interesting concepts, something to think about. So I, I really like the topic you're working on, and I think it is very relevant to all of us. So since there was no question, here is my answer. Uh, okay. I believe uh, that Kurzweil was on the right track. My favorite path goes through Floridi mm -hmm. and then uh, Thaler and Gerzel, because that's, and, uh, you know, also the people we know well, like David mm -hmm. uh, Kelly, because that's the way to get very simply and without excessive worries or excessive enthusiasm or excessive politicizing. I think that's the simplest part. Okay, so that was the answer to the- Yeah, yeah, very question. Nice, nice answer and nice talk, thank you. And we have all gone. Uh, can I ask one more question? Peter, uh, do you hear me? I hear you. Yeah. So uh, can you elaborate on the fifth revolution? You, uh, you briefly noticed it in your mm -hmm. slides, but uh, didn't say too much. What would yes. be the characteristic of it? I, dis I didn't uh, do it because I quite strongly disagree with the current approaches to it within European Union uh, for the last two years, they are developing a notion in which uh, the fifth revolution is the revolution when everything is very good and we have idealistic communism as it never was or something like that. But I remember from the time when Poland was still a Marxist country in, in theory, actually productive discussions whether Marx was a Marxist and the idea mostly influenced by German, West German Marxists. Uh, and the point is, he stopped being a Marxist when he started talking of something that can be understood as superstructure dominating the base. The economic base was for Marx the main thing 
and those kind of idealistic things are not helpful because they don't go anywhere that's why one of my slides was featured in Proudhon that I presented yesterday uh, because he was criticized by even by Marx very much not to, to talk about real economy all this uh, industrial revolutions are based on new technologies and they are mostly limited to the uh, direct outcomes of those technologies now we are AI or uh, digital technology uh, revolution the Turing revolution and what is the next 5.0 if we speak in those terms uh, yes we would have the situation when uh, AI reaches and goes beyond humans so that would be the singularity that would be the revolution 5.0 for me uh, but of course those well-meaning efforts are sometimes very helpful because it is good to add environmental reasons or even you know uh, settlements on other planets etc as interesting topics but they don't create a uh, revolution 5.0 very for, uh, thank you for the question Jonathan thank you Olga had a uh, hi Peter uh, we're glad to see you if likewise. <laughs> likewise likewise thank you very much for your presentation I have uh, actually uh, read your work uh, before in uh, during the review process and uh, I had some feeling that I want to express it's not mm -hmm. a question it's a small comment Yes. Uh, it seems to me that uh, despite of any revolution, any level of uh, technique development, any possibilities uh, providing by IT, etc., there is something in real life that couldn't be replaced by any uh, gadgets, any devices and uh, etc. I do remember you and I like you not only uh, because of your publications and uh, articles, but uh, mainly due to our meetings in Moscow, in Prague, our, our live conversation. It's, uh, it couldn't be replaced and couldn't be, uh, um, how it's to say, uh, enhanced by any way. So uh, I repeat, I, I'm uh, very glad to see you alive. Thank you very much. And now I understand that your comment was relevant uh, talking about the fifth space. So you've mentioned the meeting in, any, in any. Moscow and okay. in Prague. But yes. for instance, in Moscow, I was surprised because one of the speakers was uh, Dr. Mofsumova, uh, who invited me for a very nice presentation of 4D uh, platforms in which mm -hmm. you were, it was, these were better platforms that I knew uh, before, although then at the meeting at Seattle, uh, you know, we also had access to very interesting platforms. So, at that level, we were able to interact. If we felt that this is nice, our space, we could de develop many contacts. And probably for me, this is easier than for you. For people that I call mm -hmm. relatively close friends, maybe one third, I've never been out seen outside of the online environment. And I'm very happy seeing them from time to time, but this is less essential, may not help with some you know daily needs like who is going to help me bring my furniture to the second floor or something like that but it is compensated by other benefits for instance the fact that i'm not needing to pay thousands of dollars to see them okay so this is again my uh, my answer to the unposed question okay thank you very much peter thank you okay.